Hey guys, welcome back to Start Manga, where I teach you everything you need to know about how to draw like a manga artist. I'm your host Spencer, and today I'm going to show you three free brushes in Clip Studio Paint that every manga artist needs. These brushes will give you all the functionality you need to draw whatever your heart desires. I've been using these brushes for a little while now, and I figured it's time to share them all with you. If you're new to this channel and you want to show some support, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons and comment down below what you think of the video. I'd also like to mention that I started a Patreon page. It's got some exciting new things coming to it, so I'll be talking about that later in the video. With all that out of the way, let's get started. Just a quick disclaimer, I don't own any of the brushes used in this video. They're all from the Clip Studio Asset Store. So first of all, how do we find any of these brushes? What you're going to do is start by going to the Clip Studio Assets page. It's on the left side of that opening Clip Studios tab. Next, once you're there, type in the content ID number from the description or on screen when I show each of the brushes. Then, press the download button once you find that brush. Now go into Clip Studio Paint, and in any brush section, click Add Subtool. You can then look for any downloaded material that you have, click on it, and then press Add Palette. Now you should be able to see it in Clip Studio Paint, and you can move around freely to organize your brushes. Now, for reference, before we get into any of these brushes, I can't read Japanese, and a lot of these brushes and author names are written in Japanese, so I won't be able to say creator names outright. However, I will be showing each of the creators of these brushes and their pages, and I highly encourage you check them out on the Asset Store. They have lots of good stuff. Now, this first brush is designed for realistic manga line work. It's very similar to the real G-Pen brush that comes with Clip Studio, but with a more realistic look to it, in my opinion. If you're looking for a line art brush with that rough aesthetic to it, that handwritten look, that hand-drawn look, you should really check this out. It can also be used for hatching and smaller details. I use it a lot for just regular manga art and line art, and I also use it for that hatching and small detailing like I said before. It's especially good when you're trying to fix things up later in the process. With those smooth brushes like the actual G-Pen brush, it can be really hard to fix things up because it looks really, really smooth, and when you change up the line, it looks messy. With this brush, if I make a mistake and I want to alter it a little bit, it's a lot easier just because it's rough, so people don't expect it to look perfect every time you draw a line. Now here's two drawings I made. One is with the real G-Pen and one is with the new line art brush. You can see them labeled both here and I just really think that that new line art brush is amazing for what it does. It has that rough aesthetic without looking too generated as it would be from a computer. So that's why I prefer to use it over the real G-Pen. Now there's nothing wrong with using the other one. It's just my personal preference, but give it a try. See which one you like more. Now brush number two pictured here is a brush that's advertised to be able to do just about anything you need in Clip Studio Paint, or at least all of the major things you'd want to do. And they're right, this brush is fantastic and has lots of variety to it. It can be used for line art, painting, shading, and a lot more. The brush has a bunch of settings that you can change and alter with its appearance and things like that. I'm not used to it as much, and I'm especially not a painter, so those settings specifically aren't really something I use a lot. But in terms of what it does and what it looks like, especially for sketching, which I've been using it for a lot, it's really, really great. I also tend to use this brush for a lot of shading purposes, so if you want to give it a try for that, go right ahead. There's really no problem with experimenting with a brush like this, and it depends on your personal style whether this is going to work for you, but really, for the lazy artist like me, I think it's going to be great. Now you'll see later in the video that I use this a lot, and I predominantly use this for sketching, and I also use it for shading. But in terms of its painting properties, I think that's where it really shines, so if you're a painter, please give this brush a try, it's great. Now, brush number three isn't really a drawing or painting brush. It's much more of a utility brush. Let me show you how you can use it. You need two layers, one for lines and one for color or shading. Now draw your lines in on that line art layer and then paint over those lines on your painting layer. Make it as messy as you want. Just make sure you fill in that whole area because it's going to show you how this brush works. Now, with your line art layer selected, press the lighthouse button as seen here. This turns it into a reference layer. Now go back to your paint layer, and then select the Erase Along Edge brush that you downloaded. All you have to do now is start erasing. The brush does all the work for you, it gets rid of all that nasty overlap that you have with your paint, and it just does it instantly. It lines it up perfectly with the edge, it looks fantastic when it does it too. You know, you can edit it a little bit if you really want to get rid of those rough edges that sometimes occur, but in general, especially for things that you're trying to fill in completely, this brush saves so much time. I really wish I had used it for my torso drawing video when I had to fill in all of those torsos with the color. I didn't know this brush existed at that point and I, I should have looked into it. If I had been able to use that, I swear I would have saved hours and hours, well, maybe not hours, but at least, at least a good 30 minutes of time. So please, if you're trying to save some time with your drawing, grab this brush, give it a try. 
Now, while we're watching the time lapse, I think this is a good time to talk about that Patreon page I mentioned at the beginning of the video. I'm going to be adding a lot of stuff to it in the near future. I really hope you guys are willing to check it out. In fact, there's going to be a poll up right now to vote on one of my future videos from a few options. Now, I'm going to be adding a lot of practice documents to this, especially for my Manga Basics tutorials. I already have one up right now that doesn't relate to a tutorial, but it will in the future. And this is for facial feature practice. So it's a document that has a bunch of heads on it with empty faces, and you can fill in the faces with the guidelines. More stuff like this is going to come in the near future, so support the channel by joining my Patreon. You can find a link in the description. If you still want to support the channel but you don't want to pay, which obviously I completely understand, it can be expensive, there's still a lot of things you can do to help me out. Hit that subscribe button and like the video to help the channel grow. And you can also leave a comment to let me know what you thought of the videos and any other videos that I've made. Any support is always appreciated and I'm very thankful for you guys for watching my videos. Now I want to show you how you can make manga art with these brushes. In the background here, you'll see that I'm going to use all three brushes to make a piece. The everything brush is great for sketching, so I'm going to use it for that. And then this line work brush, I'm obviously going to use for my line art. And also a little bit of hatching. I'll be using that edge eraser to get rid of any bad shading that I've done or any maybe any overlap of the lines. And so hopefully this turns out pretty good. And now that we've got all that out of the way, enjoy the drawing process.
And there you have it. I think these brushes were great for putting this whole piece together. I will say it's a bit tricky once you're starting out because these obviously these brushes can be very new to you, but with any brush you eventually learn how it's used and some special things that you can do with it. I think the learning curve is not that steep with these and if you already know how to use the general inking brushes in Clip Studio Paint, these are going to be very easy to get into. So please, again, give these a try. All right guys, that was three essential and free brushes in Clip Studio Paint for manga artists. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe, and comment down below what your favorite brushes are in Clip Studio Paint. This has been Spencer from Start Manga, and I'll see you later.